So we're gonna talk about WSL2, Windows, Linux, Kubernetes, Docker, localhost weirdness and the networking and why you gotta do things with a Kubernetes network and what is some of the asymmetry asymmetry of that. And I'm sure somebody that knows the magic will explain it. Um, so basically what happens is when you have a Windows host, right? You can have a network adapter uh, that's tied to your LAN and you can have a, and then it turns out it has a localhost adapter. So that's the two gray boxes here are the two network adapters. and when you bring up Linux WSL2 instances, it turns out the way the magical networking works, which I don't understand at all, is the local host network for Windows is actually shared across the Linux servers, right? So if I put something up on localhost on either of the Linux box, the Windows machine, that's the magic of the way the networking works for WSL2. And what it means, and this is actually interesting, right? Because Kubernetes and Docker kind of have their own network thing happening. And if I want to expose a Kubernetes service, like the Kubernetes dashboard or the API gateway or some other Kubernetes service, uh, to expose that to WSL or to the Windows host, I actually need to run a cube control proxy, generally for the API server, or I can run a port forwarder for TCP or HTTP, right? And, and, and in a way, they're the same. So, but because by default, the cube control proxy in this environment actually puts itself on localhost 127.0.0.1. Um, when you bring up those proxies, they become visible across the, uh, that network, the localhost network. And so if you bring it up on any of the Linux machines, it's uh, visible on the Windows host, right? So if I need to see like the Kubernetes dashboard or a private service, um, Basically, what I do is I do a port forward. If I want to talk to the API server, we typically use the Kubernetes proxy. And you just got to decide where you're going to run that. But the thing I figured that you figured out is you only have to run it once if you put it in the right place because it drops it on the local host network and everybody can get it. Now, what that means, though, there is some weirdness about the way this thing works, right? So the reason these guys can see the Docker instances is because they're all those ports get exposed on localhost with these proxies and other things. What doesn't work, and what also works is the reverse sort of a service pod can actually go see a servers on the Windows host if you can get the routing right. But basically, um, because this guy's sitting, because of the way the proxies go into this network, uh, you actually can't see anything from here attached to these other networks unless you get the routes right. So if you need to leave uh, your Kubernetes or Docker cluster and see a server that's not, not, you know, like sitting on the Windows host, that thing probably isn't listening on localhost, right? And so there's some other networking to do. But so the big part here uh, is basically if you're going to have multiple of these hosts, uh, or you could even set up a Linux host that just does the cube, the port forwarding and the cube control, like a custom one. Um, it can only be happened once, right? Because these ports, this 8001 and this 8001 for the two different operating environments are really the same thing. So that's the big deal, right? There can only be one because all these things are being exposed on localhost. And so if you bring up one of these cube control guys, the proxies or the port forwarders, uh, that you only need one of them. But if you put it on the Windows host, none of these Linux machines are going to see it. So there's an asymmetrical set of behavior here between the Linux host and I dem Oh, I was going to demonstrate that. I demonstrated that in the other take. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so here, oh, so here I've got three VMs, and I'm going to run the proxies on the right, and I'm going to run the curls on the left. All right, so I'm cleared up. So if I do a curl here, fails. I do a curl here, fails. Do a curl here, it eventually fails, right? Because Windows behaves differently. And why is that? That's because, let me see if I can get the drawing back and I lost it, there it is. That's because we don't have these proxies running here. And so none of these services are exposed on the local host network. Okay, so now if we were to bring up a proxy here, so I brought up a proxy in one of the Linux servers and I curl this thing again, it works. I curl it here, it works. I curl it here, it works, eventually. Some weird route thing there. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? And if I were to kill this proxy, and so what that did, 
right, is it exposed one of these guys into the local host network where everybody could see it. You know what? Yeah, right? Okay. So, and if I kill the proxy, of course, when I do it, it can't connect, it can't connect, and it can't connect, right? And I can also bring this proxy up on a different machine. And that's cool. And we kind of expect that to work. So let's go here. And let's go here. And this guy actually retried and made it work. It must have kept retrying, right? So a proxy on either of these Linux servers uh, does the right thing because it puts it all the routing because they're both WSL2 instances. Uh, it just works, right? Now, what's really weird is if I do the same thing, kube control proxy on the Windows machine, that works on the Windows box, super fast. Mm, that looks interestingly faster. But if I do this for the two Linux machines, they both fail. So that's it. If you're working with WSL and you're trying to figure out what the networking looks like or Kubernetes clusters and why you need to do these proxies to expose that, really it's about ingress into this controller and typically what we're doing here is we're putting up like a proxy uh, for that across that basically sits on the local host network on one side and it sits on the Kubernetes network on the other. And then you get this other weird callback behavior you got to look at. I'm not, I haven't really looked into it too much, uh, but there are notes in the blog article that I will eventually put together. So I hope that's useful. It I just did not understand how this thing works because I was lazy. And now you can be lazy too.